Hello, everyone, and welcome to Art Night. And we're going to have some great time tonight. Let me just go ahead and make sure everything is up and running. And it looks like it is. And that's really all we need, right? As long as everything's up and running. And I'm going to be right up there where you can see me in just a second. <laughs> oh, as I get used to uh, just a slightly new setup. So here we are. Hi everybody. Now I know that that opener was a little bit different, so let me just tell you some fun facts. That's actually some original music from me. I do a bunch of that, and I wanted to add something a little bit more today. Just a little bit of original music, a little bit of fun. Something different. Hey Silver Fox, how you doing today? We're going to leave that right there. All right, so even today's view is wonderful. So I hope that you can hear me just fine. We have captions on in case you need them, but it is art night. And this, like so many art nights, is a special time for us to be able to get together. <clears throat> and also some painting, some discussion, spend a little time unwinding and letting go on a beautiful Saturday. But first, a quick visual descriptor. Uh, I have long brown hair, glasses. I'm wearing a blue tunic, uh, which it's a little bit long so you can't see it, but I have this wonderful floral uh, skirt on as well. <laughs> there, there you can see that. That's a bit long so you can't see it. There we go. <coughs> All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and make sure that all the sound is great. Uh, and I might need to actually just speak up a bit because, uh, you know, sometimes microphone and everything, but hopefully this is better. Hopefully you can hear me. Hopefully I don't find it sound so far away. Thank you so much. I also have this beautiful silver bracelet on and these wonderful purple fingernails today. And we are in my study, my library space, my studio. <clears throat> right behind me we have a canvas. It's looking like it needs paint. This canvas looks like it needs paint. It's stark. It's blank. It's waiting for us to do something. It's waiting for paint. That's how it is sometimes, right? We, we, we find ourselves staring at a blank canvas, staring at an empty pad. No matter what you do in life, you'll find yourself staring at a space that's yearning for something to be created there, something to be produced. And that's what we're going to do. No, you're absolutely right, I do. I need a lavalar for... Uh, this, um, but that's something, because I'm going to need a wired one for these types of streams, but let's see. So let's go start right off. We're going to get into this. So here's our beautiful canvas on our wonderful easel. Uh, this is a great easel too. I think I might, um, might have to share a link for this later on. Uh, because this easel is wonderful, and I like it because it all folds up, it's all collapsible, really easy to transport, and these canvases are also great, and these are available in my Amazon store. But, <clears throat> let's talk about abstract art, and let's talk about what it is, and what it is is completely open to whatever you want to do. So if you've never tried art before, and if you've never gotten involved in art before, abstract art is a wonderful way to begin because it just, it's limitless in what is possible, what is doable, what is acceptable. And, and that's, it's that last part which I find amazing about abstract art because pretty much 
everything is okay. Everything's fine. Everything's acceptable. Everything is allowed. There are no wrong things to do in abstract art. And that's one of the reasons I like it. Now, I primarily do abstract expression, which covers a wide range of different types of abstract discipline. Um, but let's go ahead, let's get started in painting. You know, this is what we're here for, right? We're here to paint. do need to get a new palette. I have this wonderful, uh, I got this actually at a local uh, dollar store. Just this wonderful little palette. Easy to clean, easy to use, great to have. You don't need, you don't need um, expensive things. You just need brushes, you just need canvas, you just need paint. And I'm actually going to start off by creating uh, my underlayer. And when I do my underlayer, it's kind of the start, the base. And this is called a color field. And this color field, I'm actually going to start off by using a purple iris from Apple Barrel. Um, that's a 21486E purple iris. Uh, from Apple Bear, which you should be able to see there on the second camera. Um, that's this right here. So Apple Barrel is a wonderful paint to use. It's an acrylic. It's most of them are matte. This is a matte quick dry, and we're going to be using this. It's a great little paint, and this is where I'm going to start my color field. When it comes to the color field, there's not really a rule. Uh, but there's a certain way that I do it. Generally, I will go in lateral brush strokes. Now, I'm coming up a little bit higher on the brush than I normally do. Sometimes I'll hold it really close to the bristles. A little bit higher up right now just so that you can see what I'm doing but I'm actually gonna go ahead I'm gonna change my grip to do more of this now you're gonna notice right away that one of the things that I actually do one of the things I actually do is I don't um, I don't apply a 100% even coat of paint I will go back up um, but I don't ever try to you know make everything a hundred percent uniform not unless there's a specific goal and sometimes I don't think we should have a goal sometimes I think we should just be open to our experience and this is one of those moments you know let's just be open to what's coming open to our experience and let things happen as they may and now that I've gotten this wonderful purple iris here I actually want to go ahead and I want to put a different paint on so I'm going to use two colors for my color field and I'm going to go ahead I'm going to get that second one now <clears throat> and in this case if this will, uh, <laughs> my paint's clotted slightly. That's okay, it's still usable. In this case, I'm actually going straight for a crafter's closet black. So you can see that right there, this is just a black. It's nice, it's dark, it's, a, and then this is also a nice budget paint, crafter's closet, it's just a nice black. Simple, easy. I'm going to use the exact same brush, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix that black into my purple iris, and once I do that, I'm actually just going to start applying, but instead of top to bottom, I'm going to go bottom to top. To 
this bottom to top with this wonderful uh, mix of purple and black. Being a bit, a bit aggressive here. There's nothing wrong with that, actually. There's nothing wrong with being aggressive with your canvas. I use a canvas board most of the time because you can just be nice and aggressive with it. And you notice I'm just going right up to the top of this. So I started at the bottom, but I'm allowing the black to just thin out as I go. Alright, now that I've done that, I'm just going to do something a little different. <clears throat> now I was just using, and my apologies, I was just using a 3 inch brush. And now I'm changing to this one and a half, half inch flat brush. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to start uh, drawing the paint. So I'm going to use a, a counter stroke. Uh, oh, you found your brush is wonderful. Yes, if you're here, feel free to paint along. Feel free to enjoy yourself, to just play. But we're about to use a counter stroke here. So I've just been going left, right, right, left, back and forth with these lateral strokes. And I'm now going to use this one and a half inch brush. Uh, sounds good when I lean down. I'm going to keep that in mind. And I'm going to do my best to have the best volume I can. And we're going to make sure that the volume and the sound quality improves as we go along. But <clears throat> I'm going to take this one and a half inch flat brush and I'm going to start using counter strokes starting just rapid. And I'm actually holding the brush again really close to the bristles, really close to the end here. So you can see that I'm holding right on the metal where it attaches to the brush itself. And I'm just rapid. These are my counter strokes. You can see I actually managed to um, spread a lot more of the black. Now I'm just going to grab from the bottom and just pull up. Just pull up. That's all I'm doing, is I'm going to the bottom of this and I'm just pulling straight up. So now we have that there. And um, I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to do a few more from the bottom up. And these are rapid, so I'm actually going against and pulling away, if you can see what I'm doing. I really like that. I really like that. So now what I'm going to do, though, since I just did that, is I'm going to grab this Parrot Blue. So this Parrot Blue uh, 21185E from Apple Barrel, I'm going to grab this. And I'm just continuing to move here because I have some things I want to do. We're going to be doing some things here on this canvas. It's going to be beautiful. So that's my parrot blue. Not changing brushes. Using the exact same brush. So using the exact same brush I'm actually going to go ahead, I'm going to get right into this parrot blue. I'm going to get a bunch of it on that brush and then kind of get loaded up. So you can see that on the second camera here. A bunch of this wonderful parrot blue. And it's really bright, isn't it? It's really bright and wonderful. So for this parrot blue, I'm actually going to hit right where the top of the black is, where the thickest part of this black is right here. I'm going to be hitting right in here. And we're just going to go ahead and I'm going to do these back and forth 
these back and forth right to left, left to right strokes again. Get this wonderful quality here where we're now going ahead and putting a little color and since I'm doing it over top of the other two paints what we're going to get is we're going to get some wonderful highlights some desaturation we're going to get more counter strokes essentially we're going against the grain of what we just painted once I get to the end of that. And you'll notice I'm leaving the bottom third, the bottom third of the black, I'm leaving that alone. Just leaving it right alone. So now we have all this here. So if you can see that, let's turn that to the second camera slightly. How does that look? I'm gonna turn that to the second camera so you can see very well on the second camera what things are looking like right now. We have this uh, hard black at the bottom, which is mixed with this purple. And then we have purple and blue and black in multiple stroke grains on the top two thirds of the canvas. You know, it's, it just makes something visually interesting to see. And um, right now we're just gonna, we're gonna allow this space to be explored. But one of the things that's going to happen today is we're going to continue to work this painting and to work semi-wet paint the whole time. Semi-wet paint, we're going to keep working it, we're going to keep moving it, we're going to keep, keep it going. So from here, I'm actually going to move to this uh, cerulean blue from Gotta Deal, and this cerulean blue is a wonderful, wonderful, strong, brilliant color. Uh, this is also a quick dry, and uh, this one, it's it's actually a 36. You can see right there. So this is the cerulean blue. It's what we're going to put on next, and uh, yeah, isn't it wonderful that purple under there? It's great. But we're going to take the cerulean blue, and once more, I'm going to put that right on top of what we're doing. Trust me, this is going to be amazing as we go. Hmm. Now, <clears throat> sometimes you'll see painters, they have all of the paints they're going to use just laid right out on their palette or laid out ahead of time. I don't, I don't work that way. I don't work that way. You definitely can if you want to lay out everything you think you're going to use ahead of time. But what I would suggest is following your intuition. This is a very active paint style. So we're going to move over to this one inch flat brush. You notice we've just been coming down in size. So we started off with that big three, and then we went to the one and a half, and now we have a one inch flat brush, and we're still using the same kind of brush here. Just moving a size down, as it were, every time. And I'm gonna get some of this loaded up here. And, uh, so this is this beautiful cerulean blue right here on my flat brush. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to come to the top again of this black and I'm going to use counter strokes. And you notice I'm pulling upward again rapidly, quickly pulling upward.
now that I've done that, I'm actually going to come to the top of the painting. And I'm going to do those rapid pulls from the top edge also. We're getting a little bit of paint overflow, and I'm just pulling it off, and then I'm just pulling the brush along the top to pull that off, and then we're going back down. But one of the things I'm doing here is I'm creating a wonderful texture underneath, this beautiful texture. And I know now that we've actually done this much, we've covered up a lot of the purple. But don't worry, that purple's coming back. Because now that I've done that, I'm actually going, I'm grabbing the purple iris once more. We need a little bit more of it. I ended up with a little glob there that won't come off, but that's okay. That's okay. And I'm going to grab a nice clean one inch brush this time. Brand new brush, brand new brush. I'm going to get a lot of purple on it. Once I get all this purple on it, I'm going to actually do my lateral strokes again. You're going to see that this has a wonderful base on it. You know, before we get to the designs, before we get to the painting, uh, right in these early stages, we're really establishing our texture. So I'm doing these lateral strokes again, but I'm not starting right at the top edge. I'm starting about an inch down from the top edge. About an inch down, and then I'm getting this nice layer of purple. I'm going to do a couple inches of it. A couple inches. Actually, we're going to make it closer to like maybe three to four inches of canvas that I'm going to make this bar of purple on. Just a little bit more of it. I want a lot of it here. And you'll notice I still haven't touched the top inch of canvas with this. We've left that untouched. Because actually what I'm about to do right now is now taking this same brush, I'm going to start in the middle of my line, the middle of this bar, on one edge. I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to start to fan it out in both directions. One thing I'm going to have to do here really quick, I'm going to get the lock out of my way. Get that lock right out of my way. I'm going to get a little more purple. I'm going to come and get, get some more of my parrot blue. Same brush, same brush. I'm going to come here and start fanning the opposite direction. Working my way all the way up to the top of the canvas being kind of aggressive with the canvas. I'm going to mix my cerulean and my per uh, my cerulean and my parrot. So you can actually see what that looks like. So this is the cerulean and the parrot blue that you should be able to see on the second camera that's mixed up. I'm going to come down here 
and I'm gonna quickly make strokes in the center creating a large bar of color we really we really got it going on I want some more purple on the top I don't have enough purple on the top I don't I don't want the top to miss out So you notice I went lateral and then I did the quick pulling strokes up and down for a moment. So now we got a lot going on. We're getting a lot of, on the canvas. I'm really liking this. This is the next thing I'm going to do, then we're going to let the canvas rest for a moment. I actually have this Liquitex ink. So this is a deep violet, and I'll show that to you right there on the second camera. This is a deep violet. This is from Liquitex ink. It's going to be a lot thinner than everything we've applied so far. And it is a PR122. Uh, yeah, PR122. And this one here, this is a wonderful Liquitex ink. It's an acrylic ink, and it's deep violet. And I want some of this. As I try to get the cap off. Now, I have a little bit of it here. I don't need a lot. Don't need a lot. gonna grab yet another flat brush really quick a really long one but I'm still gonna be using it close to the bristles I'm gonna get this deep violet on there and I'm going laterally now starting around the black and I'm gonna cover up some of the black So first I went laterally, then I went uh, vertically with pulling strokes. But what I want to work this uh, violet upward. I think that's good. I'm going to lock that canvas back into place. So from here, <clears throat> and on the canvas, we have many blues, purples, violet, black. We have this wonderful uh, gradient and mix of colors all happening. And you'll notice it's all still very wet. All still very wet. Um, and that's one of the great things here, is we still have this wonderful wet canvas, but right now, in this color field, uh, what we've done is we put several blocks of color, and amongst these blocks of color, we've, we've worked our way into a pattern of sorts, uh, from top to bottom to bottom to top, from dark to light to dark. Uh, but also getting different value in our areas, different um, levels of shade. And I think it's quite beautiful so far. Hopefully you do too.
And uh, depending on where you're joining us, you might see a link nearby, actually, uh, for my website. Uh, if you enjoy my paintings, if you enjoy this wonderful time, you can go over to my website and you can see paintings I have available um, as prints, as originals. But you'll also see a link, uh, you'll see a page on there that will link you to my art workshop that happens every month. It's absolutely wonderful. All right. <clears throat> so this is where we are right now. This is what we've accomplished. I'm going to go ahead once more. I'm going to make sure that the second camera can get a good look. So you can really see what's going on here. You know, that's just, just this beautiful range of color, grade, everything. And you might be wondering, like, where do we go from here, right? Where do we go from here? Uh, and there's so many places we can go from here, but... I'm going to let this rest for a moment while I talk to you about what we're doing next. Uh, so what I'm actually going to be doing next is I'm going to be coming in here with a very small brush. I'm going to be coming in here with a small little round brush. I'm going to show you that round brush here on the second camera. So this round brush uh, this is a small, this is a number two. So this is a number two round brush. Very small, as you can see, uh, against the tip of my finger. It's, it's, you know, it's even smaller than the, it's like half the length of my fingertip. So it's about half the length of my fingertip. It's a very small little brush. And this is a round brush, a number two. And we're actually going to come back in here. And I'm going to start to make... Uh, organic patterns with a heavily contrasting color. I'm going to start to add things here and it's going to be lines and it's going to be shapes and I want to actually go ahead and completely break up everything I've just made. I'm going to break it all up. I'm going to change the context of what you see uh, and then we're going to see where we go from there. <clears throat> and when I go to make these lines, I'm actually going to use this, this jack-o'-lantern uh, orange. I think it's appropriate not only for this time of year, but it's going to stick out really well against these purples, these blues, this black. It's going to stick out so wonderfully well. Jack-o'-lantern orange. This is also from Apple Barrel. It's a 21472E. That's jack-o'-lantern orange from Apple Barrel. I like this color. Have a little sip of my water, let this paint sit just one minute longer. All right. Also try to make sure that you can properly see the painting. Hopefully that helps. I'll give a better view. Uh, I realize it's still very wet, so it has a lot of reflective quality to it. But this reflective quality, that's fine. It's going to dry. It's going to go away. We don't have to worry about that staying there. But <clears throat> now that I have all this here, I have to decide how I'm going to start applying these organic lines, these shapes, to break everything up. And whether or not it has a purpose. Um, in this case, I do, I do have a purpose. Uh, but... 
I'm going to leave that purpose out of our discussion because I want you to be able to look at whatever this painting becomes and uh, place upon it a story or an image that you can find. I don't think that it's necessary for me to explain to you what it is. I think it's for your eye, your mind, your heart to decipher, to unravel, and to figure out what you see. <clears throat> So I'm going to get orange, a bunch of this jack-o'-lantern orange. I'm going to hold the brush a little above the bristles, but still very close. I kind of want a pen. I want to hold it almost like a pen, you know? That's what I'm about to do. I'm about to hold it like a pen. It gives me the ability to go back and forth, you know, kind of make movements. But um, really quick, you'll want to use your uh, fingers and your elbow and your arm, not so much your hand, all right? If you're deciding to do this, uh, <clears throat> go ahead. Uh, use your arm and not so much your hand, or not so much your wrist. I'm just making kind of uh, some starting lines. Because I'm using a round brush, they're going to just kind of fade and, and go thick to thin and thin to thick. I'm not really minding how far up I go. And I'm just going to go ahead. I'm doing essentially you know, lines that V off and connect together at the base. I think that's actually a nice start to that. I'm not going to get rid of my brush or this orange paint. I'm going to actually just clean it off, set it aside, and I'm going to come back to this brush. I'm going to come back to it. Now, actually, I've come back to my original uh, large brush. So this really big brush that I had. It's, and it's very wet right now, very, very wet. Uh, and what I'm about to do is I'm about to go ahead, I'm going to make this whole canvas very wet uh, from top to bottom. I'm about to uh, desaturate the entire piece by saturating it with water. Now that I've done that, I'm actually going to go ahead, I'm going to grab my orange again. I'm going to make some more lines really quick.
We now have a lot going on here, don't we? Look at all this. Look at all this activity and this life on the canvas. Look at everything we've done. And uh, at this point, <laughs> I know it seems like we have a lot on the canvas. I'm about to grab some purple and put it back on again. I'm going to grab a number eight filbert brush. Get some purple on it. I'm just going right over top of everything. Uh, about from the top edge down two thirds of the canvas. Lots of this purple. With lateral strokes from side to side. And I've gone ahead and I've obscured so much, but it's all still there. All right. So you notice that we've gone through several transformations now, uh, leaving us where we are at the moment. Uh, which is an interesting place to be. Now, <clears throat> I could leave it be, but I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to grab this palette knife I have here. It's this little one. And I'm going to go back to where the orange is really thick. I'm going to spread those lines back up into the desaturated and now very unique upper pattern. And I'm actually going kind of rapidly here. pulled the orange up and I'm going to the top now. And very rapidly scraping down. But I mean we can't leave it like that, right? Can't leave it that way. So I'm going to grab this really thick palette knife. I'm not using the entire thickness of this. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use one of the tips. Just use one of the tips. Bottom up. Bottom up. I'll lock that back into place. We're going to lock it back into place. Grab my little round brush again that I was using for the orange. And return to these heavier lines. But because of everything I just, just did, we have now a number of different textures and patterns and color changes So there's almost this wonderful pattern here now.
look at this texture, this pattern. Just going to reorient the canvas so you can see it better on the second camera. This is where we are right now. Look at that. Because I went back through with the palette knife with those quick scrapes, what I ended up doing is I pulled paint from a number of different layers and I've broken everything up. I went from the bottom up and then I went from the top down. And so I've really broken up the entire texture here and revealed numbers of different layers of paint. Because we already put so much paint on here, there was so much to reveal. Uh, as you can see, we now have these bands of color that are happening. As I went back through rapidly painting with color after color to create our base. We have just so much happening. One of the things that you can do uh, with abstract art is follow your instincts, but another thing that you can do, which is just amazing, <clears throat> is you can follow what's happening in the moment. And whatever's happening in the moment is going to give you an interesting direction to follow along with. I'm actually going to go ahead. I'm going to show this to the camera one more time. We're going to have a little sip of a drink. And from there, we're going to experiment and play a little bit more. But the great thing is, at this point in time, I'm really finding a experience inside my canvas. And I hope that you're seeing it as it grows and you're feeling it, and, and you're experiencing it too. This is living art. And living art, whew, living art is something amazing. You know, we can just go ahead and experience everything that's there. One more sip, one more sip. Now I have a lot of directions I can go from here. I have a lot of exploration I can do I'm actually going to go back to the Deep Violet from Liquitex Inc. There's that right in front of the second camera. So this is that Deep Violet I used before from Liquitex. We're going to put a little bit more on here with another flat brush. We're about to get messy, but messy in all the right ways. Just going to get a whole bunch of it, and actually you can see how much of it is on the brush in the second camera. Like I, I'm loaded up, loaded right up with this, this wonderful deep violet. lifting the lock up on the top of the canvas so I'm not impeded. I'm about to go ahead and just go straight from one side to the other. Nice lateral stroke. I've dripped a little and I'm just going to let it happen. In fact, I'm going to put so much right there that hopefully that drips too.
There we go. Now you'll notice I'm only going one direction. I'm only going from the, uh, <clears throat> the left side to the right side, and I'm not going back and forth this time. But I am returning to the top, and I'm smoothing out the paint, smoothing it out. But I'm allowing it to streak and bump over all my layers. Because I have those two drips, I want another drip. Right there. I have these wonderful drips happening, right? See, I'm just creating another right there. And the way to create those drips, if you want them, is just press in with a large amount of liquidy color. Now with these inks, it's really easy. I say that and this one doesn't want to do it now. There we go. It's just going to find its way down the canvas. Now I'm going to go back up to the top. Again, smoothing out my color. Now I'm actually going to go back and forth on this. Uh, which is going to create various gradient pulls. Sometimes you want a drip to happen, but it doesn't. So I just add a little bit of water there. There we go. Now it's a different color, but I like it. I'm going to get a little bit more of that water. There's another drip. There's another drip. Turn this right towards my other camera again after I lock it in place. So you can see what has occurred. And that's actually the state of our piece right now. Look at this. Texture, life, color, and, and almost a light. There's like a light inside this, I think. I don't know what you think. I feel a light. breaking away from some of the forms that oftentimes I follow in these live painting videos. Uh, but one of the best reasons to do that is as we break away from those forms, you get to see a broader range of kinds of paint, of expressions, uh, of beauty. And it's beauty. It's, it's all beauty. Now I have this really watered down cerulean parrot blue mix. Actually, you can see that there on the second camera. I'm just going to show that to you. It's a really watered down cerulean parrot blue. Something wonderful. And what I'm about to do is I'm actually about to grip right next to the bristles with this. I'm going to start at the very top edge and I'm just going to just 
draw straight from the top to the bottom right there. And one right there. And one right at the bottom edge. Another one right on the, the right side edge. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my uh, purple. Get a little purple in here. And I'm going to go right over top of those. Not really getting rid of the lines, just smearing them out. We could be so many different places right now. So many different things could be happening. We could be looking at so many different things right now. violet. adding extra strokes here and adding a little framing top edge right side edge bottom edge we're getting more layers of color here and more physical happening more dripping might wonder where we're going to do now is again I'm going to take a palette knife and this one's again it's just kind of a cute very sharp palette knife I'm not going to add any color I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to scrape across this Kind of these angular right to left, top to bottom marks. I'm going to do one bottom up. Do three right there. Being very aggressive with the canvas. So these are our textures right now. I'm going to lean this towards the second camera so you can see. These are our various textures, colors, patterns, things being pulled out. We have a lot being pulled out here, like a lot, a lot, just a lot of really interesting things happening here on this canvas, and we're getting a, a lot of activity, and every time I come back in with the palette knife or with a different brush stroke, I'm pulling something out again.
But now that we've gotten this far, going all the way back to my orange, and painting more strong lines on top. There we go, just a few. Just a few. Just a lot. We have a lot happening, a lot going on. I think it's just a beautiful process. Now what we've essentially done here is we have continuously worked the canvas, uh, not really giving it any breaks, not really allowing any of our paint to set too long. We'll just give a layer here and there a minute, two minutes to settle, to dry, while we work somewhere else. We desaturate, we add water, we add more fluid, and we keep going, we keep moving. And that's the fun part here. You can see deep areas below. So you can still see the texture of the canvas, but you can also see the texture of the paint. You can see all the continuous lines and action. Just a, a symphony of movement. Symphony of movement. Now there's certain colors that I normally use when I'm painting. One of them is blue. Uh, if you've seen enough of my artwork, you know I use a lot of blue. And we do have a lot of blue here. I'm not using my, uh, and in a lot of ways it is, my signature yellows. I'm not using my yellows today, but I am using my blues. <clears throat> it makes for a, a wonderful experience to try something different. Uh, but what I wanted to capture in this is almost is almost a duality. So there's one more color I'm going to add. And that is going to be this flag red. This is from Apple Barrel. It's a 21469E flag red. So we're going to add some of this flag red way down at the bottom. It's going to become friends with our orange. Now with the orange, I was using a number two round brush. Now I'm gonna use a number six round brush for this red. You can see on the second camera, that's much bigger. Uh, the, the number two was a thin little thing that barely um, was half the length of my index, well, the tip of my finger. This uh, number six is almost the entire length of the tip of my finger. It's much thicker, much thicker. Number six round brush. I'm going to be more deliberate with these, with this red. I'm going to come right next to where the orange is. And I'm going to shadow the orange. I'm going to go right along next to it. Shadow the orange. These are not fast, hard lines. These are slow, deliberate lines. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and get some more of my orange. I want to get that orange kind of partnered with the red now. Not as fast and as hard as last time. No, slow, deliberate. Slow, deliberate lines. giving us all this different activity, all this different texture. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna turn this again towards the second camera so you can see what's going on here, how this is all being affected, and where we currently are. We now have a lot of different textures, a lot of different patterns. We have a number of colors interplaying with one another. It's really fun that way. And the only way to finish this out, or at least the only way to me, is uh, adding some darkness to the base. It's so bright. And in my mind, the only good dark color to add to that base is going to be deep violet. Because I want to tie the bottom in with the top. I want to have some unity. I'm going to use a filbert brush for this. And this is a number 15 filbert. Number 15 filbert brush. Let me use some more of that deep violet. But the bottom edge of this canvas is now really hard. It's really hard. It's not, it's not as fluid as everything else and is changing. So what I'm about to do is I'm about to just wiggle the brush along. I'm wiggling the brush along that bottom edge. I'm gonna get some more, this deep violet. I'm gonna come right above that and I'm just gonna wiggle along. I'm gonna press and just wiggle back and forth with the brush. Press and wiggle, press and wiggle, press and wiggle. I'm going to go back, press and wiggle, press and wiggle, press and wiggle, press and wiggle. I'm going to get some of the orange onto the brush. Press and wiggle, press and wiggle, press and wiggle, press and wiggle, press and wiggle. I'm going to go back to the other side, press and wiggle. And I'm just going from one side to the other. Now let's go ahead, get whatever we can, that purple, press and wiggle, press and wiggle. And get a little bit of that orange. And... Sweep up slightly. A little bit of this red. All sorts going on, all sorts. Go back to one of my uh, palette knives. Angular pulls up from the bottom one way, then the other. Oh, look at that. Look at all that. A 
go back to my large round brush. Add those lines again in another layer. But keeping a harmony. Keeping a balance. All right. Let's take a look where we are right now. Let's take a look. Let's share this. I'm going to turn this towards the camera again, the second camera, so you can get a better look. This is where we are. Now this has like an extremely large amount of texture, doesn't it? It's just an amazing amount of texture and depth. And I've tied in each layer slowly with one another. I tie one in and then I tie it in again. And then I tie it in again because we just wanted to keep flowing, to keep moving, to keep doing, to keep trying. So most of these strokes are really simple. Uh, wiggle, single line, uh, extreme moisture saturation and desaturation. And these fast, rapid pulling strokes, lateral and vertical, to create a great tapestry of different textures and colors. Let me just adjust that for a moment, right there. Thank you so much, by the way. You know, I can't believe, <coughs> pardon me, I can't believe how much paint we laid down in what is essentially a very short amount of time. And really, the only thing I want to do right now is uh, just go back with exactly one action. And that is one last application of Deep Violet. I'm going to be using I'm going to be using a flat brush again and getting a lot of deep violet on it and then see if I can't create a couple more drips here because I really liked those couple of really hard drips we made So right on the top layer, I went ahead, I made a couple more drips, and I've just added some more visual interest here. And I'm just going to move slowly downward, just like that. That's good. I, of course, ended up with paint all over my hands, but you know what? Uh, who can really say they've spent an evening painting if they don't have a little bit of paint on them somewhere? Just a little bit. Though I also realize that there's evenings and there are days where I will spend all day painting and I won't get a single drop of paint on myself somehow. And then I will spend uh, uh, just a little bit of time with all of you a little bit of time with all of you painting, and then I just end up with little splotches here and there on my hands uh, paint. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. So yeah, I'm just going to turn this to the second camera again, just to show where we are now that I've added more of that deep violet, and I think that the deep violet adds a lot. 
and those drips add a lot. And we have this great field of colors. It's an amazing field of colors. And just so many textures. You know, what you can accomplish in a small amount of time uh, with intention. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. Oh, see, I already like that comment. Uh, looks like a storm over fire or wheat. Mm, I love both of those. Yeah, let's go ahead. I'm just going to lean this to the camera for a moment. And then, you know, I will say, when you're talking about this rapid abstraction, uh, you go with your instincts, you go with your feelings. Today I actually had something in mind, but I'm going to keep that for me. I want you to be able to look into it, see what you might see. And so far I like that kind of response uh, from, from the chat. Looks like a storm over fire or wheat. And both of those concepts are amazing. Just a storm over fire or a storm over a wheat field. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful concept. You know, these paintings, they, they can invigorate you. Like right now I'm sweating. I'm sweating doing this. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm, I'm active. I'm not just talking to everyone here. I'm, I'm doing and I'm feeling and I'm expressing and it's, it's all around quite beautiful and exhilarating to be able to do this. All right, I'm going to set that back down right here. Hopefully that's right in view of the second camera still. All right. Now, once more, I'm going to be sharing in the comments uh, my website and my digital gallery. <clears throat> Feel free to go over to my website and digital gallery and, and check out not just my originals, but my prints. Uh, check out the uh, page where you can find the link to my art workshops that happen every month. Um, last art workshop, uh, we had I think it was over 30 people there, and it was absolutely amazing. It was around 30 more people. It was so much fun. Everyone did beautiful work. We expressed, we acted out so much with brush and paint and canvas, and we build our feelings out. And that's, that's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to be able to do. And it's absolutely amazing. And I encourage you to express and to feel and explore through art. <clears throat> and uh, I hope that you had fun here. I know that this was a different way for us to do art night. Essentially, I've, I've just been painting and talking about the process of the painting and the exploration that we got to do. So I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that it was as much fun for you as it was for me. And I hope that some of the techniques that I was doing tonight and the walkthrough of how I did them is something that you can take and you can try to apply those techniques and those applications and even those color patterns and things and take them and do what you want with them. Uh, do what feels right to you with them. Now, this piece here, 
uh, this original will be available for sale through my digital gallery on my website. And uh, I will make that available shortly. Uh, so most likely you're going to see that up and available for sale tomorrow um, on my website in my digital gallery. And you can buy this original if you'd like it. Uh, or check out all the other artwork I have available. But before I get going, uh, if anyone has anything they'd like to ask in relation to the artwork, to the process, please feel free to ask in the comments. Um, you know, that's one of the great things about this. If you If you'd like to go ahead and ask anything, feel free. But, oh, I enjoyed this. I'm going to get right down here next to the microphone. I'm going to slowly fade out of the camera view. Oh, let's do this. Now it's right next to me. Right next to me. But it's good because then I'm out of the way. You can see the art. You can see the studio. I'd like to say I wish you all well. And I hope that the rest of your weekend is amazing. Hope that your next week is amazing. The uh, remainder of your September as we get ready to roll into October. The fall is here, and there's so much that's beautiful about the fall, and I can't wait to share that time and more time painting with all of you. And of course, it, I should say, uh, my, next, my next art workshop is October 15th. Uh, that's on a Saturday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Tickets available through Eventbrite. You can find those tickets also on my website that I have linked. Oof. Hurricane. Hurricane, maybe. Ooh, no, 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 no. But then again, that's something that's going to happen in certain parts of the country. We all have different weather. You have hurricanes down here, down there, up here. You know, we enter into the very very long winter and low temperatures and deep snow so everyone has their own experiences in their own world and it's kind of amazing that you know you can be talking to someone so far away and and be able to enjoy this same time with them and have completely different world experiences uh, around you Though, of course, you know, I hope that there is no hurricane. I hope that you are safe. I hope that you are well. All right. We're going to be closing this up today. I hope you had a lot of fun. Be well. Stay excellent. Be excellent. Appreciate you all. And um, thank you for being here. This has been your Saturday night uh, <laughs> abstract art night. <laughs> all right. See you all again real soon. Bye, everybody.